black or white, male or female, rich or poor, gay or straight. What's the difference? Number 14 and number 41 are on a mission to improve the unity of the world, one person at a time. Welcome to the 14 and 41 Unity Show. Hello, I'm Alexis Hornbuckle, number 14. And I'm Matt Gersper, number 41. And I'm Khalid Loda, number 44. And we're different, but made from the same stuff. Right on. We're very happy to be broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. And we're excited for you to meet Khalid Loda. Welcome, Khalid. 14 and I are super excited to have you on the 14 and 41 Unity Show. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Our pleasure. So just take a minute or two and tell our audience what you're doing these days to make the world a better place. That's a tough question, but uh, I'll try my best. So uh, currently, I, am, I live in Regina, Saskatchewan in Canada. And funny enough, it's also dubbed the Queen City. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, uh, employed by the provincial government. And I'm also a basketball coach. I have my own business called Elite Basketball Training Academy. And my wife and I have a nonprofit organization called the Heba Foundation that we just launched about a year or so ago. And what we're trying to do is, with basketball, teach life skills and then help uh, young men and women who come through our program, if they're good enough, uh, attend university. So at a minimal cost on a full-ride scholarship, emphasis on, you know, academics, obviously. And with the foundation, the goal before COVID-19 hit was to try to help uh, alleviate any kind of financial hardship or barriers uh, to uh, uh, some of the uh, youth in our city to help them access physical activities. Very good. See, lots of good stuff you're doing. So let's go back, let's say 10 years, back to 2010. What were you doing? What were you doing back then? Man, 2010, my wife was pregnant with my son, Ibrahim, which is Abraham in English. And uh, I was an intern with the provincial government, just graduated uh, uh, from the master's program here at the University of Regina. And totally different uh, outlook, I would say, back then, you know, just trying to make it and, you know, starting a new family and provide. That was my main goal back then. Yeah. Ten years changes a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. (laughs) Let's go. Let's go forward ten years. So what is your vision of your role in the world in 2030? Um, Hopefully, you know, have a positive impact on the life of the youth that come to our program. Um, Hopefully be a better father, a better husband, um, a better person overall. Not easy in these crazy times we live in, but you know, trying to do my best to, you know, bring more positivity than, you know, destroying this world or making it even worse. So uh, that's the goal, hopefully. And it's a very tough act to balance uh, because of everything surrounding us and sometimes more negativity. But the goal is to, you know, hopefully be that positive influence uh, amongst the youth and uh, my children, most importantly. Oh, beautiful. I, lo- I love the, the idea of, of time. And there's a quote by um, Argentine footballer Lionel Messi. And it says, I start early and I stay late, day after day, year after year. It took me 17 years and 114 days to become an overnight success. <laughs> <laughs> now, Khalid, does life sometimes feel like that? We've got to really do the work consistently, right? Yes. And, and that's the hardest thing is like, you know, how do you stay – uh, true to yourself also and consistent in this day and age of social media influence and everybody thinks that um, you know uh, the, 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 the grass is green on the other side and you know uh, keep teaching these young men and women the, the, the simple principles of integrity loyalty and it's it's a work that every time I have a graduating class that leaves and go on to college or whatever uh, and then a new breed of youth uh, come in I find myself redoing the same stuff. And even with the guys who graduate, I still find myself rehashing the same message. So I guess, you know, he's right. You know, like 
it's never ending as long as you know uh you are consistent in what you're doing you got to repeat that message over and over and over it's a repetition so yeah i do agree with that statement awesome over to you 4k Khalid, uh, thank you for joining us as matt said earlier i'm excited man um you do exactly what i do so i love it i'm like hype about this whole interview i'm gonna have to holler at you after this show uh, <laughs> But uh, what I really want to know is what was your initial response like when you first heard about Rafru and um, from our mutual friend and then Fred, I'm sorry, our mutual friend, Freddie Jackson, Mm -hmm. what was your initial response there? And then what do you think about like our website? If you got a chance to check it out in the team gear. So, you know, I found it like when uh, Freddie hit me and he was very vague in the information. He said, Hey man, check this uh, website. This guy, Matt, is, you know, a great guy, you know. So I went online. I was like, I didn't know what to expect. And uh, uh, I found the fact that, you know, you guys, you know, are different in a sense. Like, it's a collaborative effort mm-hmm. from different people of different background who are, you know, uh, having the same message, but also having that platform to be able to share your story. Uh, what we found... Um, you know, a lot nowadays is like, you know, you can only listen to one narrative, right? Like, you know, everybody else is wrong and we were right, yeah. you know, especially in this, um, uh, the, the climate of uh, division, you know, whether it's in, in the United States or in Canada or across the globe. And we all have a painful story to share. And whether it's a racial one or it's, you know, uh, 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 a story of like, you know, a painful memory that somebody was trying to share or bring awareness to, I found that your what you guys don't, you're not censoring and you're not only hearing one side. You're actually like, you know, open. And I like that. It's, it's, it's I think it, it would bring it, brings us, bring us closer together. And also the fact that you have the ability to, hey, the other side is listening to what I'm saying. Right. So that's what, you know, separates you guys from what I've, you know, seen across, you know, and again, like uh, diversity and inclusion is a passion of mine, social activism and everything. And, but it's good to have a platform like yours that allow everybody to speak their mind and to hear different sides, you know, because that's important. Nowadays, you can only, like, you know, it's only one side versus the other versus trying to Mm -hmm. find some common ground. So that's one thing I liked about uh, what you guys, uh, the way you tell your stories and your website, like the cause, you know, your, 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 your purpose, your mission, that stuff is very honorable. And, uh, you know, and we need more of that stuff. We need more like, you know, Hey, uh, we all have a story to share. We all, you know, went through difficult times, but what do you remember the most out of it? And can you be that positive influence versus holding on to the negative? Right. That's awesome. I don't know if you got a chance to check out any of our gear, Matt, you got a shirt on today? Uh, I saw the gear. I, I like. Hey. hey, look! Hey, look! That's the logo in full. Co- oh wait, other way. I'm sorry. Zoom got me twisted. But that's the that's the logo in full color right there. Matt Matt's a fan of the black and white. You know, he's serious. Down I'm basement. digging that. Hey, Matt and uh, Alexis. As long as you're shipping to Canada, hey, yeah. I'm 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 going to order some gear. I promise you that. Hey, absolutely. Thank you. We appreciate it. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, one last question before I turn it back over to Matt. Like, what are your hopes by sharing your unity story and joining our mission to help improve the unity of the world one person at a time? Um, I think that, you know, it's to bring awareness to uh, the fact that my personal story uh, had like both sides, right? The negative and the positive. And I found uh, in my coach, Coach Morocco, uh, somebody in uh, him and his family, somebody who is completely different from me, uh, you know, Catholic Italian American man who, you know, was able to reach out and say, Hey, you, my responsibility during these crazy times, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to shield you from what's going on. And of course, in the beginning, you don't understand it until like, you know, it gets worse and worse through the media and stuff like that. Right. And I was able to find another family that I could find, you know, shelter, I could um, uh, uh, confide in. And that's, that's what really, you know, impacted me the most. For all the negative, yeah, you remember it, but that part that somebody from a different faith, a different uh, ethnic background was able to reach out and say, hey, I got you, man. 
Mm. It's what, you know, uh, shows the humanity that we all have. It, it, regardless of where you're from, or if you see something wrong, it's our natural instinct to be like, hey, man, let's do the right thing. Right. I don't care who it is for. You see somebody in the street on down on their luck, and if you can help, I don't care who it is. You can help. Do the right yeah. thing. Get out there and help. And that's the thing that I'm trying to, you know, the message that I'm hoping yeah. that, that people grasp is, you know, no matter who it is, help. When God sends you that help, it comes from, you know, it can come from anybody, even your worst enemy. So, yes, that's yes. the thing. <laughs> I love that. You're so spot on right now. I'm over here like, preach, man. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Madam, go ahead and get that back to you. All right. Well, you kind of walked into my next question. Your, your unity story shares one of the darkest aspects and also the brightest light of humanity. And you experienced it all in, a, in your junior year of college. Um, so you mentioned a little bit what one takeaway is. What's another t- biggest message, biggest takeaway you hope readers will get by reading your story? Um, it, the other takeaway is we're vulnerable, you know. Uh, and, you know, I'm a man of faith. Uh, I, I believe in God, I believe in the creator, I believe in Jesus and Muhammad, all these prophets that came and, you know, and they all had the same universal message when in pain, when in need, when you're down, you know, turn to the almighty mm-hmm. and without him, not, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I, and I know that. And that's something that, you know, I made it, you know, as I got older, uh, a fundamental piece of my life and my, my children's upbringing. And, you know, like I tell them, you need anything, you ask God. Because, you know, at some point, I'm not going to be able to, you know, give you what you need or what you want. And so that's the other takeaway. And I think that, you know, in this age of social media, you see a lot of youth who, you know, um, uh, uh, rely heavily on their work ethic or their physical attributes without giving praises to, you know, uh, the Almighty for allowing them to do what they're doing. And that's the thing that, you know, uh, in my pieces, I found myself in a vulnerable state. I didn't know where to turn. And my dad, when he was alive, he's like, you know, he was preaching the, the you know, turn to God, ask for his help. And, you know, his mercy is greater than his anger, his wrath. And that's, you know, the thing that uh, allowed me to find solace in people like coach Morocco and his family and my teammates and stuff like that. And despite our difference and despite what was the meat, what the media was, you know, bombarding us with back at the time. And thank God it was no social media, but they were able to see beyond that and say like, Hey man, you just like us, you know, you, you know, there's no except like the differences in the faith, but that's, that's what um, I hope the other takeaway is to have a personal relationship with the almighty and make it that and, and appreciate everything he gives you because at any time he can take it away. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. All right, Khalid, we're going to take a quick commercial break and tell everyone about three things. Okay. Super amazing health device called Zona plus how to get a dollar discount and how their purchase will go and support a big donation to WI TV seven. Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made by good people. That's why I love Zona Plus, the world's first software controlled handheld device that improves cardiovascular health. You're gonna love it too. I use mine almost every day to keep my blood pressure right where it should be. What surprised me though, is this little device has been adding muscle to my biceps too. I walk around all day feeling pumped. Check them out at Zona.com. Use coupon code HAPPY for $50 off. Plus, for every order placed during the month of October, I'll donate another $50 to WYTV7. Welcome back, everybody, to the 14 and 41 Unity Show. I want to give a special shout out to our October sponsors, Zona Plus and Happy Living. Khalid is joining us, Khalid Loda, and for those who are just now joining in. Uh, hey, we're going to get right back into it if you're ready. 
Yes, ma'am. All right. So I want to know how have the lessons that you've learned as an athlete, in particular the unity lessons, how have they helped you become a better, more successful person? So obviously sports played a huge role. And again, like I said in my story, like, you know, the concept of race, you know, I was kind of familiar with it, but never put in my face until I moved to the United States uh, or, um, 22 years ago. And uh, it right away made me feel, you know, self-conscious. And I was like, okay, like, where do I fit? And then uh, people on one side say, are you black? Are you white? Are you mixed? Or you want to, you know, and I was just like, oh my God, like th this was really overwhelming. Uh, even though like I grew up in, in North and West Africa, like we had like, you know, we, we never like, you know, looked at our skin color as a, you know, as, as a difference maker. Right. And I think that sports played a huge role in also having good coaches slash mentors who really, uh, you know, embraced the fact that, you know, uh, it was beyond bigger than basketball. Right. And that's the thing. It's like, uh, you know, in your young man, you know, all you think about is, you know, I got to, I got to play ball. I got to get that contract. I got to play overseas, you know, and you kind of forget your academics a little bit and stuff. But I had mentors like coach Morocco, who's always emphasizing on the fact like, Hey, like, don't you dare, you know, leave without graduating. Don't you dare, you know, like he emphasized on that. So I was able to graduate college and, you know, with a degree, which down the road helped me, you know, get into my master's program here. And, you know, I come out of college and my master's debt free, right? Like most people I know can, don't have that luxury. So I feel very lucky to have some strong mentors who mm -hmm. actually, uh, you know, uh, even though my parents were still alive, but, you know, you're so far away and, you, you know, this, that independence can be tricky a little bit. And, you know, but people who were out there constantly, whether it was teachers or it was coaches to say, hey, man, like, keep what you, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Don't forget <laughs> your academics. And uh, mm -hmm. that was the important piece is the, the fact that I was lucky enough to have strong mentors who understood the value of the scholarship, the value of being a student athlete. And he always said to us, um, you know, 90% of the people want to be you. And we were like, what are you talking about? It's like every time you walk on the floor, every time you, you know, you walk in the hallway, people wish that there were you. So you got to be careful what kind of message you're sending and how you carry yourself. And so that stuck with me. Uh, you know, of course, we made mistakes. I, you know, we're humans. We did stupid stuff that, you know, uh, people perceived, perceived us in a certain way. But when that message stuck, I was like, OK, it's about, you know, uh, the positive impact you can make. It's about the differences you can make. Mm -hmm. Use your platform. But most importantly, like, don't just, you know, be a basketball player. Yeah. You're more than that. Yeah, I love it. Matt? Awesome, awesome. So, Khalid, here's a line from your Unity story that I think may surprise people. Quote, I broke down crying one night after a game on the way back to Pittsburgh. I didn't play well, got a technical foul, let the crowd get to me, and my coaches got upset at me. Here I am, a six foot nine tough guy, crying on Coach Morocco's shoulder as I struggled with everything. Tell us about that. So, um, I think we, so we were, uh, the university I played for was the only liberal arts school in a predominantly uh, Catholic school division, right? Like university. And I think we went to Ohio and, you know, we won the game, but I didn't play good. And I always, like, you know, had this, big pride ego that you know I had to get 15 rebounds and score so many points to you know I just loved the game so much and and I didn't play good you know and it was tough and you know uh it, it, it started you know with a string of you know we 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 had like some ups and down that year a little bit in the beginning of the season and I um you know uh we we went to we went back in the bus and Coach Morocco was not happy with me. He hated when we, I, I would get a technical or like, you know, do something that would cost. It was, it was about the team for him. And I respect that. And I, you know, appreciated it later. And, you know, got in the front of the bus, sat next to him, was talking. And, you know, and he was letting me have it, but in a nice way. And I got emotional. And I was just like, yeah, Coach, you're right. And I just broke down crying. Like, you know, and of course, <laughs> like, um, I'm a very private person. And that day, I just couldn't hold it in. 
And, you know, I just cried. And then he gave me this hug. And, you know, he's about six feet tall. You know, he's not a big guy. But, you know, here I am crying. And, you know, of course, the, my teammates and the girls' team were looking at me like, you know, what is going on? But I just like, I didn't care, man. <laughs> I needed yeah. to let it out. I just needed to let it out. And, you know, uh, like, I never, it wasn't about having a tough persona or facade. You know, I was naturally tough kid you know uh resilient i would say and but that day i just like you know with so many emotions you know in and you know the climate uh we were living in uh kind of fueled that and i felt like you know if i'm gonna go down i'm gonna go down swinging by myself but that's not how it really works and it took me a while to open up to coaches and players and, and my teammates to tell them, Hey man, this is what I'm really going through. Like I'm struggling a little bit and I don't know how to deal with it. So yeah. that was the biggest thing. So what the audience doesn't know yet, cause it hasn't been brought up. Khalid's playing this season after nine one one happened mm. as a Muslim man. Yes. And the weight of that is what he writes about in his unity story. And you also include this quote and just give us 30 seconds reactions to this. You said 19 years have passed since that dreadful day. And as I look back, I, I suppose on the whole year and your life afterwards, I focus more on the good that came out. Yes. Tell us about how such a struggle can lead to you focusing on the good these days. Well, simply because, you know, um, one, I don't, I don't want to hold a grudge, you know, uh, and we all, you know, have biases and, you know, preconceived notions about people and you know and again this is central to my fate like we're not allowed to judge you know we are asked to forgive um and so i went through a difficult time for a short period of time and i know some people have it worse and i just came to you know why would i hold on to that negative baggage you know i don't need that in my life so i focused on the fact that my friends came around my teammates were supportive and, you know, my coach and his family were there for me until this day. Like, you know, my coach just turned 78, you know, and this happened like, you know, 19 years ago. So uh, the love, the, you know, affection that he has for me, for my children, for my wife, it, none of it is fake. Everything is a hundred percent who that family and who that coach, who my coach is. And so that's the thing that I would choose to remember the most is that no matter what, there's always going to be some people in your life that, you know, going to put a hand on your shoulder and say, Hey man, how are you doing today? Mm -hmm. Are you, you know, are you having a bad day or a good day? Like let's talk. And I want to be that kind of person. And you experienced a lot of good stuff that year that would not have happened if it hadn't been for the bad stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Quickly. Um, Tell us, which of your teammates is going to be the next one to follow your and Freddie's lead and share their unity story with us? I, I'm going to go on a limb out here, but I haven't talked to him. But uh, my best friend, Marco Sanders, he, um, he's now, he lives in Norway, where my wife is from. And, um, you know, he's a coach there. He works for a, um, a pharmaceutical company, I believe. And uh, he coaches the pro league. He coaches... Uh, the youth as well. Uh, so he's the one, next guy that I think, you know, you should have on your... Uh, on your All right. And then you got to do a better job explaining it to him than Freddie did to you. Oh, I got <laughs> you, man. I got you, yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. going to reach out to him. Now it's time for something we call Fun Time with 14. Take it away, Alexis. Absolutely. My favorite part of the show here. So basically how this works is I'm just going to fire off some rapid questions you got about three to five seconds to answer them. Literally, whatever pops in your head first. That's what we do, all right? You ready? Ready. All right, we'll start, we'll start simple. How old were you when you first started playing sports? Uh, I was probably like 10. Okay. What sport would you play if it wasn't basketball? Soccer. Nice. Or football. Uh, football, well, we call it back home. <laughs> well, you may not be happy with that one. Uh, what was your favorite place that you've ever played in? Uh, favorite place? Uh, that's a tough one. I would have to say, you know, when I transferred to Minot State University, that was, and we had a huge gym for NAI school, they're Division Two now, but that place sits 12 or 14,000 people. 
huge. Nice. Um, okay. If you weren't coaching, what would you be doing? If you weren't coaching and mentoring, what would you be doing? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know because I found that purpose. And that's it. Yeah, like, I, I, I guess I'll be, I, yeah, I'll be lost, to be honest with you. You look like, uh, a, song, look like a song and dance guy to me. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I, I, I uh, you know, like I said, I do have a job, but the, the, the fulfillment that I feel from coaching, the passion, that's what, you know, makes it whole. It makes it, it brings a purpose to your life when you do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what was your most memorable sports moment? When we won the uh, when we went to the national uh, championship for the NAI schools at Point Park University, uh, that was the only time we advanced. Uh, incredible week, uh, and you know, winning a championship at any level is or like participating in it is the hardest thing you know you can possibly imagine. So that for me was you know a huge accomplishment and a very very memorable uh, week and season that we had that year. Absolutely. Um, what is your most embarrassing sports moment? Um, most embarrassing sports. Uh, yeah, I had, uh, you know, uh, I, I was, I was coach asked me to come in the game and there was a big puddle of water. I didn't see it. And then boom, the, the split, you know, everybody was laughing in the gym. You know, so <laughs> it was a painful split. And I said, coach, <laughs> I'm not going back in. So that that was very embarrassing for me. Jeff. Oh man, yeah, that's uh, whoo, yeah, that's pretty embarrassing. And it ended with a slight injury, so that's no fun either, right? Yeah, not funny at all. Um, <laughs> just to get a little deeper here, what is one message that you would give to kids who are going through recruiting? Ah, uh, one, stay true to yourself. Don't compromise your principles, your values. And then find somebody that's going to coach you on and off the court. Absolutely. Hey, I hope y'all are listening to this, whether it's kids or parents. What you said rings so true. It'll help you go a long way. Uh, okay, last question. Okay. If you can live anywhere in the world, you and your wife and your family, where would it be? Oh, man, most definitely somewhere warm. Like, we get minus 40 degrees Celsius here. You got you to gotta name one. You got to name a place. Um, place, place. Well, it's a split between the Maldives and uh, what's the other place that they call um, Tahiti. There you go. Okay, okay. Pretty yeah. good spot. All right, Khaled, that's going to wrap up, you know, our rapid questions. Uh, fun time with 14. Thank you for, for playing along with me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, before I let you go, um, do you want to share any parting remarks or comments for our listeners? Um. You know, like it's, you know, the, 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 the message is the same um, in a sense, like we got more in common. You guys already said that we have more in common than differences. And, you know, it shouldn't come down to, you know, skin or thoughts or uh, beliefs, but it comes down to your actions, you know, and how, what kind of person are you, you know, and there's going to be evil and, you know, bad people from all over the place, race, religion, it doesn't matter. But uh, I would say to the listeners, surround yourself with people like-minded, you know, who have the same message and believe in what you believe in, in a sense, like, you know, a positive positivity in, in, in the world versus like, you know, trying to bring other people down or think all negative. So that's what I would say to the youth. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Matt. All right, folks, over the next two weeks, Khalid's going to be responding to comments, questions, and remarks from listeners to this show and readers of his Unity story. At the end of those two weeks, he'll pick the person he feels was most impacted, and he or she will win, get ready for it, a Rafru t-shirt or hoodie. Nice. Yes. And now, if you're hearing my voice and you were inspired by today's show, please donate what you can to WITV7. It's a wonderful 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Thank you, number 44 and 14. This is a great privilege to work with inspiring people like you 
to do our part to make the world a better, more united place. Khalid, your unity story reveals the very spirit that Rafru is founded on. People from every walk of life coming together in the toughest of times to support each other. And the life you're creating as an entrepreneur, mentor, father, husband, agent of change, coach, and basketball aficionado is truly inspiring. Thank you for sharing your important perspective with our grassroots movement to improve the unity of the world. Thank you, Matt and Alexis, for having me. Greatly appreciate it, and thank you for your kind comments. You bet. Folks, this is a powerful unity story. It's another one we have for you to read. Thank you, WYTV7, for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep sharing amazing stories from retired athletes like Khalid, all of us working together to improve the unity of the world. A special thank you to our sponsors for the entire month of October, Zona Plus and Happy Living. Remember, folks, the more you buy, the more I'll donate. So buy a Zona Plus today. And most especially, thank you to our viewers and listeners. Go to RAFRU.com to read Khalid's inspiring unity story. You'll also find links to websites and social media and all things Khalid Loda. Find him, friend him, discover the important work he's doing helping others learn the many physical, mental, social, and moral benefits of sports, not just for the athlete, but for the entire community. Engage with him and get that free t-shirt while you're at it. From Alexis and Khalid and me, we love you and we want you to be united, not divided. We do what we do at Retired Athletes for Radical Unity to inspire you to join our movement to improve the unity of the world one heart at a time. Till next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome. And this is the 14 and 41 Unity Show. And we're out, folks. Black or white, male or female, rich or poor, gay or straight, what's the difference? Number 14 and number 41 are on a mission to improve the unity of the world, one person at a time, the 14 and 41 Unity Show.